I don't know what I'm gonna pick. Okay, here we go, here we go. If it sucks, I'm gonna throw it away. Okay, this is okay. Um, <laughs> okay. What advice would you give to a person who is looking to enter this industry? I think this advice should be like four sentences. Like, if someone were like, what's the first thing I should do? I will say, see everything you can. Any, every movie, TV show, play, read as much as you can, learn about writers, and when you watch something that you like, learn who wrote it, who directed it, and follow those tracks so you can gain an aesthetic of the kind of art that you like mm -hmm. and the kind of work you want to partake in. I would say take an improv class. So you can get out of yourself just for a little mm. bit. Um, try on different, di different ideas. You're the straight man or you're the, uh, the crazy, the person that is like the wacky one in the improv scene. Um, and you also get to meet people from all walks of life because people who have to take improv 101 are in business or um, in, a, in an array of fields that uh, won't necessarily be in your acting classes. But just you learning to be accountable um, for the person that you're in the scene with. Um, and regardless of that person's background, I think is such a learning experience. So everything that you said, mm -hmm. and then just take an improv class. I would say for anybody kind of jumping in this, uh, well, one, jump in and make your mistakes. I don't really think this is for everybody. I would say come into it and see what you like about it and what you don't like because you're gonna only figure it out through experience. You know, I've known a lot of people who came into the industry as actors but found out that they like to direct or they like to PA or they like, you know, different aspects of the film industry. So just jump in, make your mistakes and kind of figure out yourself and where you fit in, in the industry and capitalize on that. Um, I also wanna add for improv, look for scholarships. Mm -hmm. Look for mm -hmm. ways to fund your studying. Um, and then, you know, look for ebooks, just like anything. Ask people for recommendations for books that you can rent from the library. Like, just figure out ways to do what you want to do and study it, but in a way that, like, you could also sustain. Mm -hmm. Because, as we all know, classes, headshots, uh, coaching, uh, I don't know. It's been called the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Yes, that exactly. Sport. Yeah. 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 And the more knowledge you have, the better off you're going to be. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I would just say study. Uh, like, take a class. Don't sit around and talk about it. <laughs> you need to get out of your house. Mm -hmm. Stop talking to people about that you want to do it and just go take a class. And and don't be afraid to look stupid. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and just figure out, like, do I want my life to be this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, a, that's a very real question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would just say, like, to add to that, get your training, get the best training you can wherever you are, uh, and if that doesn't serve you, move, do the best, you know, whatever is economically feasible, move um, to a place that has good training, and be continue to be eternally curious, no matter mm -hmm. what you do, because that's going to serve you, um, mm -hmm. because when you stop being curious, I feel like, personally, that's when you die inside, mm -hmm. so be curious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Mm, anybody want to grab a question? Oh, I do. Oh, we'll pass it. Yeah. All right. You gonna catch on me? I kind of want another question. Don't hate okay. me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Ooh. Give me another. Give me another. Actually, let's mm. do this. One. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. I don't even want to ask you this Ooh, question. Ooh, you know what? That's so that is a two-part question. Yeah, and the like, other part fell <laughs> in Should here. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, but ask the question and I'll follow up. Okay. Has theater or the pursuit of this dream helped? You or oh. anyone in your family heal in any sort of way? Hmm. Oh. oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Um, because now... I mean, with being an actor and being an artist, like I was talking about earlier with emotional blockages and having to figure that out through the work before you get to the work and afterwards, it's allowed me to understand 
so many different perspectives. And so when I'm talking to someone from my family, let's say like they don't know me that well because we don't see each other often, um, it's been easier to almost not read them, but to just empathize with like what's going on mm -hmm. if they're like nervous to ask me questions or vice versa. I can pick up on energy so much easier. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's helped heal in that sense. I feel like it really does, especially because my family and my extended family don't, they don't go to the theater that often, that when they do go, and my father and I in particular, we have like almost a practice of he sees me in a play and then I call him and then we talk about the play. Um, the last play that I did, it was in DC, so a lot of my relatives were able to come mm -hmm. see it. It was a play called Everybody by Brennan Jacobs Jenkins mm -hmm. at the Shakespeare Theater Company. It was very wow. fun. But the play's about death and I had like all my aunts and uncles come one day and we all got a drink after and my aunt pulled me aside and said it really helped her begin the conversation with herself about what it is to die and to come to terms with your own death because the main character in this play is coming to terms mm -hmm. with the fact that they're dying and she thanked me for the play and she's like I don't see theater and it, it really made me understand a little bit what it means to like begin to wrap things up a bit and at the end of the day, what, what do we really have? Mm -hmm. And I was actually quite nervous to share this piece with my family because of, you know, history and the fact that they don't go to the theater that often, but it really, I mean, that, in that particular instance really healed, helped heal my one family member who was dealing with death mm -hmm. in her own family. Mm -hmm. And it, in a way that she was like, I can understand, it has put, it has given me the words that I have not been able to have, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is very, very powerful. I was like, okay. When I was uh, when I was in college, <clears throat> I don't know if this is a healing moment, but I think it's like a, a a moment of being seen and a moment of understanding, which I think are part of the steps to healing. Uh, my brother and my mom came to see me in my first show in college. I was playing an old man, so I had all the makeup, <laughs> and I'm crying about the death of my wife, and I'm an alcoholic, and so I'm, I'm drinking, and what is I. Uh, it was a new play, something Revenge of the Night Hunters, and I can't remember the name <laughs> of it. Um, but my brother was sitting there, like in the front row, young, and uh, I just remember him. His face, he was just smiling. We're six years apart, and he was smiling so big. And he sees me afterwards, and we're in the car, and no one's really talking. And he turns and goes, "Man, I wanted to like say your name and like touch oh. you." <sighs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, and that just like got me because it was just like, I love my brother. And uh, I'm, I just felt proud that it was like, yo, you, you, see, you see me up here, like you feel something for me being up here. And I think, you know, I just texted him the other day and we, uh, he's gotten older, I've gotten older and we're just talking about like, how do we move in the world as men? How do we do our thing and, mm -hmm. you know, make our family proud? And I think theater opens up those conversations as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also what you were saying earlier about you do this for freedom. Mm -hmm. And I think in our freedom of expression, it gives our parents, our siblings, our relatives mm -hmm. that same sense of, of freedom. Like they mm -hmm. too can you know, cry when they want to cry or laugh when they want to laugh, or at least it, it gives them, I guess, a bit more liberty to do so. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that's healing in itself. Like you can talk about your feelings it's okay or like you doing that role where you're crying mm -hmm. like you're doing it in public like yeah. it's, mm -hmm. there's no shame with that mm -hmm. my actually the thing that my brother texted me recently was like yo I'm, you know he's going through his struggles he's growing up he's like he's 22 now and he's like bro you know I've been having a tough time you know working all this stuff and he said but I remember you used to tell me all the time it's okay to cry at least once a month mm -hmm. uh, and I've just been crying out of joy because my life is going in a in a better direction. And so I was just like, cool. Like, this, cause you know, I would come home and bring all the theater hoo-ha that I would learn. And like, <laughs> I remember I was trying to do voice work on him. I was like, yeah. 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 come on, come on. And he didn't get it. He was like, bro, I'm trying to play ball. Get <laughs> and, but like, you know, it, 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 it moves me to, to know that my brother is catching something, mm -hmm. you know? So. I think they do, whether they say it or not. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. even the fact that we're putting ourselves out there every day multiple times a day mm -hmm. it's inspiring but i think and our culture i hope 
um, at least those like in America are proud of us because we are expressing mm -hmm. who we are and we're so proud to be Habesha. So. Yeah. For me personally, I think we have a, oh, as a like, Habesha male, we have a lot of blockage and going through like my first acting classes, they want you to release everything. I'm like, what this up, is, you know? So I was like, I didn't know I can cry like that. I didn't know I can do this, you know? And just like kind of letting everything out was like a very emotional time for me and like a weird thing because I'm like, I've been blocked my whole life and to just let everything go now, it's like, Ugh, what is this? This is weird, you know? Like all these emotions are coming out, all, this, all these feelings, but then, you know, you control them and you're aware of them and uh, you become a master of your emotions instead of your emotions becoming a master of you. And I think that helped me heal a lot and just acknowledging like, you know, anger or, you know, certain things that make you do certain things. I, I just acknowledge it. I remember going through a heartbreak one time and the teacher like made me just talk about it in class, I broke down in front of the whole class. But after that, I felt amazing. As a habit shot, it's like, hold your mouth, don't cry. What are you doing? You look stupid. And it's like, uh, 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 you know? But as an actor, it's like, you let it out. I'm like, oh God, white people really taught me like how to. <laughs> As Habesh has, you know, you, they want you to conform to a certain way of what they know is like the best. You know, it's in good intentions. Don't get me wrong. It's in good intentions. Mm -hmm. They really want the best for you, but that's to the best of their knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we kind of know more, you know, um, just being exposed to everything, social media and how the digital world is. Uh, we have access to everything. So it's like, okay, like I appreciate and acknowledge what you're trying to do, but let me handle this from here on out. And I think for like family purposes, um, I think it's helped out. Like, cause I I went to college and dropped out. Like it was nothing. Like I, was, I had an argument with my teacher and just left and never came back. Type of stuff. And then it kind of relays to like either younger siblings that I have or like cousins who was their parents would be like, okay, like Fuman left college uh, and he's kind of doing his own thing and he's surviving. You know, he's doing uh, from what they see. You know, like he's doing pretty well. It gives them a little more freedom to mess up and kind of just give them time to figure things out because I had no idea what I was doing when I was going to college. It was like this, this, and that, you know, just kind of, I was kind of everywhere with it. But uh, I just stuck with it and I kept on going. And to see, like, you know, 10 years down the line that, like, I've been out in New York all this time and just, you know, having a great time, it shows that the other kids can like, like, like example, like my little sister who's in college right now, it's like, okay, she doesn't need all that pressure because, you know, Philmon, he kind of went about his own way, but he figured it out. Give, give him time, give him space, they'll figure it out. You gotta trust your kids, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, a type of freedom that uh, I think helped the other generation or like, you know, family members in our community. Mm -hmm. Also, I clearly have a lot to say on this subject. <laughs> I feel like through the work, through the art, I've been forced to heal myself mm. um, and to work on healing. It's an ever ongoing thing as we expand as people and artists. And so because of how demanding the work is, of how demanding New York is, um, and who we have to be for our families and those who love us most, I literally have had to invest in so much meditation, journaling, um, just anything mm -hmm. that will allow me to release and to really align. Mm -hmm. So I am so thankful to the arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you wanted to go. Oh, Ooh, I guess that's the sign. <laughs> wow, it picked its own. <laughs> Give me out of here. <laughs> okay, what advice would you give your younger self before starting this journey? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Honestly, I wouldn't tell myself anything because I came into it like I'm gonna go to New York, I'm gonna work for the 4040 Club, I'm gonna work for Jay Z, I'm gonna make it in a couple of years, I'm gonna do this, this, and that. And then that was not the case. So I didn't, had I known what it would take to get me to the position I'm in now, I was like, I'm not doing that. Mm. But when you're going through it, like you're in the motion, you might as well stay in it and keep going, like Nipsey always said. The only genius thing he did was never give up. TMC, the marathon continues. Uh, and I took that to heart, you know? And uh, so I think when you, like, I mean, there's nothing really I could tell myself because I had to make, I made so many mistakes that weren't really mistakes. Uh, they led me in positions that I needed to be in in order to move forward. So. It's like, well, what can I tell my younger self? You know, just, just do it. 
mm-hmm. really, you know, I was already doing it. So at the end of the day, yeah, if there's someone younger that I could tell this to is to go for it, you know, like mm-hmm. make your mistakes while you're young. As you get older, like the fatigue really starts to hit in you, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, while you're young, you got the energy, uh, utilize it, you know, mm-hmm. like leave the city, do make mistakes, fail forward, you know? It's never really a failure if you learn from it, mm-hmm. uh, but go mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I would have started way earlier. I'd have been like, you should start way earlier, like mm-hmm. fight to get cast in shows in high school, don't let all those white kids take all the roles. Like, mm-hmm. don't let, you know, like I, I wanted to be in New York when I was 18 and I listened to some stupid guidance counselors some tell me like, oh, I don't know NYU might be a reach for you, but I could have gotten it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't even yeah. get me started. Yeah. Don't so don't listen to them, counselor. okay? <laughs> but I do also believe that things happen the way they're supposed to happen. So I'm, I feel good about where I am now like to be a little more financially sorry but anyway i'm just saying like i think i wish i i would tell my younger self um you're not wrong mm-hmm. about wanting this and just act and i know it's scary and you're going to be alone doing it but just go like just you're go. not wrong part is i think is a good word for it because no one's really done it in our community. Yeah. So you don't know if you're right or not. I think like just the simple fact knowing that, okay, you're right, just go and do it mm-hmm. means a lot to somebody because there's a lot of times, I'm sure for all of us, where we question what we're doing. Like, am I even doing the right thing? Am mm-hmm. I, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're crafting what you're doing, mm-hmm. you know, you're always gonna question it. And because no one else has really done it in our community, mm-hmm. I feel like that's a valid question, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I agree with all of this. I think in many ways, like you're saying, like I, the only things I would tell myself, I've learned because I've made the choice mm-hmm. when I was younger. So to tell myself when I was, when I'm younger kind of defeats the purpose of learning it. But like the only two things that I would say to maybe like younger people, myself included, is to hug yourself and love yourself mm-hmm. more through the whole experience. Yes. Um, and yeah, to just take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. and to, uh, you know, really hold yourself and to follow the thing that brings you joy. I think if an activity brings you joy, that's something worth investigating. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I loved dancing and I loved to dance and move around and I never really pursued that. And I was like, well, now I wish I had danced as a kid because my yeah. body would be a lot more limber. I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. but But a lot of it's like, oh, that activity brought me joy and I didn't follow through on that activity. So what could have been if I had followed through in mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. So just to follow, if something feels good to you, really investigate that, yeah. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. it's you. Get in there. <laughs> okay. Um, no, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's like multi-layered. Okay. What was your first goal as an actor? Was it to be on TV, stage, Broadway? Did you achieve it? So, what was your first goal as an actor? I wanted to be on Sister Sister. Oh, okay. Okay. But like the third sister, they didn't know they had. <laughs> um, what? Well, Obviously, I didn't achieve that because that show was well and gone. Um, it could come back. But in that, it could come back. I, I, they're trying to reboot it. Are they? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> but oh legal, le- le- yeah. That's a cute moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. so never who knows. knows. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but in that, the dream is to be on television, or the first dream was to be on television. Uh, I have achieved it, in, yeah, through commercial work um, and voiceovers. Yeah, that's me. Um, but yeah, that was my first dream. Still holding the torch for sister, sister. <laughs> That's dope. I honestly can't remember. I will say, I remember the, the time I decided like when I was gonna be an actor was after I failed my chemistry final. My sister is like a full on genius. And I think we were using Uvo or something. It was like Skype yeah. but for a kid, for like oh, young kids. Yeah. So we were using that um, and we would like chat about chemistry bombed the test like she worked with me for weeks 
And I was like, Zion, I, I failed. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, she believed in me before anybody else. And so she was just like, it's okay. But she didn't really know I was going to be, wanted to be an actor. Uh, and so that day I wrote in my journal, like, I'm going to pursue this as ferociously as anybody has ever pursued it. Don't know how I'm going to tell my dad I failed, but I failed my chemistry final. And like, that was my journal entry. And I, uh, I've definitely done that. I've definitely done that. I've done like musicals. I've done new plays. I got to like work on a film. I wasn't on camera, but I got to work on a film. I've done almost everything I've wanted to do so far. And now it's just like recalibrating for like what's not necessarily the more of it, but what's right. Mm -hmm. You know, like what feels joy, what really brings me real joy mm -hmm. as opposed to like momentary fleeting happiness. Like right. what really, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. My first goal, I mean, I didn't decide I wanted to be an actor until I was like 21, 22, and my first goal was to get into school, and I did, so I, I feel like I achieved that. And a lot of like the, the check marks that I was like, this is what I want, mm -hmm. I have in the last year have achieved, which is great, but it's about recalibrating the list and mm -hmm. deciding what's next, and um, trying to look outside of the small scope of what it means to be an actor, right? Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of this is like, what kind of hats do you want to wear? You know, and trying to do more of like my own writing and things like that. Um, but that was my first goal was to get into school and I did it. It was good. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. yeah. I think my first goal, I don't know, it's like, it's such an interesting question because it's literally just I want to be a working actor mm. in New York. So yeah, technically, I have achieved it, um, but I also always thought I'd be like a movie star, and like mm -hmm. so that's like the that's like the first goal, but that's like way more long term. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I think I've achieved one thing of a two part goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's achievement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel good. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay my little one. <laughs> So, I mean, my first, my goal was I, I wanted to be on TV all because, like, to kind of throw in my mom's face. Mm -hmm. So, as a child, you know, my mom used to, we used to watch a lot of TV, but my parents were very, like, uh, education forward, like, education, education, education. So, one day, she's, like, you know, looking at us, like, why are you watching TV? Why are you watching TV? Do you? That's not your job. <laughs> Oh, I'm so mad. You know I'm she gonna see this. You know she gonna see this. I'm gonna send it to her. Yeah, right. I'm a, a direct I'm link. DM. Like, <laughs> but I admire her too. Telling her, she's like, uh, she's like, let them do their job and you do your job. And my head, I was like, what if I want that to be my job? <laughs> and I thought about that for like 20 years. You know, oh, this, this is the ultimate scheme. I got a weird mind. You know, it works in a weird. It's, it's always, the it's, it's, wow. it's always like in a comedic way. I remember when I first got on TV and I told my mom about that. She was like, I don't remember that. You know, like the whole time, like I'm trying to do that for that. Um, but um, so the thing was, so that was my goal. You know, I want to be on TV. I got a national commercial for Delta Airlines. I was wow. on you know, every half a shot works for Delta. Right. I was on the flights. I was on TV. You know, people hitting me up and this, this, and that. Um, but the crazy thing is, right after that commercial, I went straight into depression. Mm -hmm. I was like, this, it, 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 I thought it was going to fulfill me, but it only fulfilled a shallow part of my heart. And that was like, if this ain't it, then what is it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went into like a, deep dive of my mind and like what's going on and what I'm doing and I found out that it wasn't really the TV you know that I wanted to be on or like this it wasn't really about the acting there needed to be a certain there needed to be meaning mm -hmm. and a responsibility to it like I don't just want to be like a big actor and make money I'm like that's I was I was on TV and I was making good money at that time I was like this this, this isn't it you know this is it doesn't do anything for me so Going back into it, I really thought about it. I had to re, uh, go back to the drawing board and redraw everything. This is like after years of going into what I was doing, thinking like I was doing it well. Uh, and then I finally, I was like, oh, this is the pinnacle. Boom, right back down. And then so when I found that uh, meaning and responsibility of what I'm doing is when not only was I an actor at this point, I became a businessman. So I have a business that 
well, essentially, I want to have my own film studio mm -hmm. where we could create our own films for us, by us, not be controlled by Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And that is my meaning and responsibility going into it. So now any jobs that I take or any work that I do, most of the time, you know, is revolving around that. You know, I work with Habasha actors, with black actors, and the whole basis of what I'm building my business to be is to be for us, by us, so we can create our own content and do whatever we want to do and give that freedom to the next generation. I want, you know, the next generation of hobby shots to be able to just walk into my studio and create whatever they want to create. Mm -hmm. If they have a good idea, if they have a good story, we have a lot of great stories to be told. Mm -hmm. I don't need Hollywood with their hand up my ass trying to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're really bright, you know? And again, like just from a business standpoint, big businesses will fail and these niche businesses will be the ones taking over in the new decade. Mm -hmm. And I just really had to do a lot, a lot of deep research and really figure it out, figure out, uh, you know, my understanding of everything and kind of, again, I had to die again mm -hmm. and rebuild myself into this new, better person in order to become the person I need to be to, you know, to get to that next point in my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's not like, you know, it's not like that one time, like, where you made that decision, I feel like it comes again, you know, and it's like, are you prepared now to adapt again? You have to cons consistently adapt mm -hmm. to what you need to be, who mm -hmm. you want to be. Yeah, I think that informs, like, our goals and our purpose, like finding yeah. our whys, like you holding on to that, like that story about your mom. And mm -hmm. then once you realize she didn't even remember it, it's like, what you had to find your purpose mm -hmm. like it was based on just a, like something you made up in your head mm -hmm. and I had like if I were like dialing back to the former question about what we would say to our younger selves it's definitely like figure out your reason why and make it based on you and your expansion mm -hmm. not um, a communication that you had with a parent or someone that you really look up to and it's just it's not real. And I think when you figure out what is and what will sustain you, then you know you can build your goals off of that and that, what's, that informs you. Mm -hmm. Something that I think is so fascinating about acting as a career is that it's um, impossible to fully achieve it. Yeah. Like, and this is just going off of what the two of you are saying. It's mm -hmm. like, no matter what, like I will never achieve the goal, the full ultimate, mm -hmm. penultimate goal of what it is. And I think what's attractive in kind of almost a sadistic kind of way is that we will mm -hmm. not achieve it. And so I think reorienting your lens to what is my purpose, yeah. right, as you guys were saying, as opposed to what's like that goal, mm -hmm. I think really allows the possibility of what your career will be to be quite endless. Mm -hmm. So that each step you take is in response to a purpose, as opposed to like, my goal is to be on TV, mm -hmm. right? and then I'm on TV, and then I go okay what now? is my life over as opposed to like i have a larger purpose <laughs> mm -hmm. and each step i take is towards that purpose and the purpose will never be fully 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 fulfilled and that's i think the beauty of it if you look at it in that way mm -hmm. and so if you shift that i think it just really opens your eyes to like what you can achieve yeah. so we're led to believe that there's a moment where oh i made it right that right. moment is not real yeah. it's the beauty of the journey Right. that it's all about you know it's like if you're not doing the things that you want to do now you know then why are you even doing it it's you're gonna find the journey is what is it right. not there's never a point where it's like oh shit you know like i got it there's no it's a continuous journey mm -hmm. right? and then it's like okay that's that's life yeah yeah, yeah.